Welcome to the Teachers on Fire podcast, where 21st century educators come to share, learn, and be inspired. We believe in the growth mindset, creativity, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and strategic uses of education technology. Our mission is to share news and views from teachers who are crushing it in the classroom and making a difference for learners everywhere. I'm your host, Tim Cavey. Let's jump into today's episode. Today I'm speaking with Jane Silversides. Jane is an elementary teacher currently serving in Surrey, BC, Canada. Jane describes herself as, quote, primary teacher who believes in helping to promote the self-esteem and well-being of each child each day. Jane, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Are you ready to talk education? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me. I am so honored to have you, and I'm so excited to finally have a primary teacher on the podcast. So thank you so much for coming on. Why don't you start, Jane, by telling us about your current teaching situation? Okay, I teach in District 36, Surrey. Okay. And I teach at White Rock Elementary School. Mm -hmm. I teach grade two, and I teach dance. It's a fine arts school, so intensive arts infused with um, everything about education there. Very, very fun. And what do you love about the grade twos? They're very sincere. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah, you don't, you don't get a lot of deceitfulness or sophistication. It's just what you see and what you hear is what you get, right? Well, sometimes you get... Lack of sophistication. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet you Which got I th- like. Yeah. Jane, we all go through challenging moments, right, in our careers. Why don't you mm-hmm. share with us about uh, a challenging moment that you experienced and how you got through it? Well, I've taught for a long time now, and it's hard for me to really remember a lot of them. Sure. But I'm going to tell you about something that happened in my first year. Okay. Because I think that's when I had the most challenging moments of my life. Almost. Okay. Um, I allowed a student to grow a garden in the sink. I thought this was a good idea <laughs> because he was very active, and I wanted him to feel good about himself and that he could help the world. And in Indeed, he said he was helping the world, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw this large green plant sticking out, and I thought, (laughs) it's green, it's good, and anyways, the next day, the principal and the janitor were just furious Uh. with me, and I realized that teaching was pretty hard, Mm -hmm. I had to pay attention to so many people's feelings, and pay attention to what people were doing all the time, and um. I felt pretty sad about my mistake at the time. Mm -hmm. But then what I've learned is that uh, when you make a mistake, you you say sorry and you forgive yourself pretty quickly and then you move right on. And I don't think anybody's really the worst for wear. Mm -hmm. The sink had about a foot of dirt in it. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I'll never Mm -hmm. forget it. I really like that. And yeah, I, one thing I take away from your story, Jane, is the part about forgiving yourself. I think sometimes mm-hmm. as teachers, we're our harshest critics and mm-hmm. just just dwelling on our mistake or, you know, something mm-hmm. that went wrong can really bog us down and discourage us. And so, exactly. I, yeah, I really like what you're saying there about just, just moving on. Yeah. What is Keeping it? Keeping yourself well. Yeah, exactly. What is it, Jane, that excites you about education today? This could be a big picture thing. It could be something small, like a favorite classroom activity. What is it that excites you these days? Well, there's something new that I'm doing that I feel excited about. Um, I'm helping my students to build portfolios about their learning. And um, I've been doing this for about five years now. And... um, So I put in artifacts, and they put in artifacts, and by that I mean we take pictures of their work, we put in videos about what they're learning, Mm -hmm. and we talk about it, Mm -hmm. and the parents get to see what we're doing. They get to talk to the parents. I get to talk to the parents. Everyone can talk to everyone, and what's happened is the students and the parents are more involved in their education, and they're more excited about it. It's really easy to communicate Mm -hmm. with everyone Mm -hmm. through the portfolios and I feel like um, I feel like my students are actually doing better. 
because the parents know exactly where they are all the time. And the students take a little bit more control and they can ask for help when they need help from their parents right away when they're having trouble. And so I feel that that's pretty exciting. That sounds really exciting. And I, I would agree. I think agency and ownership are, are really everything. And the more you have, the more you can give your students a sense of control and ownership, the more they will be motivated to learn. So that that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Is I, I have to ask, you mentioned video. So are we talking about mm-hmm. digital portfolios? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Digital mm-hmm. portfolios. Okay. That's the key word. Cool. So is mm-hmm. that uh, in, is that hosted by FreshGrade or another program? Yes, okay. it is FreshGrade. Ah, yes. okay, FreshGrade again. All right, mm-hmm. Jane, tell us about an education leader that we should be following on Twitter and explain why. I would suggest that you follow Antonio Venderman. Okay. He's a district principal of communicating student learning and priority practices, and he has a lot of jobs. But one of the things that he does is he. He goes out in the district and he kind of scopes out the local talent. He um, seeks educators who are taking risks and are being really creative. He interviews them. He makes videos. He puts them on Twitter. He puts them on the district website. And it basically shows um, innovations um, throughout Surrey. So if you follow Antonio Venderman, you'll be in touch with a lot of other teachers who are doing outstanding things and it's a great way to learn. He definitely sounds like someone I need to add to my list. So thank you for that recommendation. Again, that was Antonio Venderman. So that's I will... right. You pronounced it properly. <laughs> <laughs> so I will make sure to add add that Twitter account to the show notes on this episode. Thank you. You're welcome, Jane. If you weren't teaching or working in education, what would be your next choice for a career path? Tell us why this area interests you. I think about this all the time. Okay. Um, I hope that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I think I like to be in advertising mm. because when I believe in a person or I believe in an initiative or a project, it's pretty easy for me to promote it. I naturally want to. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy being creative mm. when I have the opportunity and I like to do music and art and make movies. Um, I'd have to study a lot to become a person who could do this, but it would be something that I'd really love. That is very cool. And you know what? My answer to this question wouldn't be too far off. I often think it would be fun to be a realtor. So I, I, oh, you're <laughs> kidding. That's my other one. <laughs> oh, really? Seriously. Yes. I, I don't know what it is, but just that combination, you know, from someone on the outside looking in anyway, I see that combination mm-hmm. of, you know, sales and marketing and photography mm-hmm. and even writing the listing description. Mm-hmm. I think it would be. I like writing too. Yeah. I think that would be so interesting. Jane, you know, everyone has personal, little personal habits, right? That contribute to our success. And, Mm -hmm. you know, on this one, I like to say the weirder, the better. Is there something that really, (laughs) something that you really rely on that is sort of like your superpower? Well, I don't think it's too weird. I don't think it's too unusual. But mine is listening. Mm. Um, Something that we tell our students to do all the time. Yes, we do. But, um... One time a speech and language therapist told me that um, communication is like tossing a ball around. And wouldn't you agree that in education, you basically are communicating all the day long? Yes. So she said, if you want to throw the ball, just you have to throw the ball just right so the person catches the message. Mm -hmm. If the person is standing close, you throw the ball gently. And if the person is um, standing far away, you throw the ball hard. Mm. And so I listen to the other person and basically let them speak first so I know how I should toss my ball. And that applies with my students, with parents, my colleagues, and and sometimes I just decide to keep my ball to myself. Right. You know, I really like that metaphor, Jane, and and I feel so like I. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I just hearing you explain that, I can just hear you sort of present that to your grade two students and oh, I, bet, uh, yeah, I bet that I really works well for them but frankly that would work well in the high school too I mean some I, I think at any age that 
that idea of, you know, make taking a moment to just make that calculation about who's my audience, yes. you know, what, what volume, what projection, what body language am, am I going to use in this situation? That's so important. Mm -hmm. Wait and see. That's my motto. Mm -hmm. Share with us about an ed tech tool that you love using in your classroom or your day-to-day -day work. Okay. Well, I like iMovie. Okay. Um, I don't use it every day with my students, but I do use it to showcase their work and their learning. Mm -hmm. um, I like it because you can combine music and images, um, and it kind of makes the learning seem a little more exciting even. It does. Um, and because I teach dance, um, it's really easy for me to take some sounds that I can make on GarageBand and incorporate it um, to make a, a movement story. Okay. So these are some tools that I find that are really creative ed tech tools mm -hmm. and something that I'd really like to see my students being able to use too. You know, I'll try to teach them how to do that. Yeah, I, I love that. And I think you're absolutely right. I think iMovie is one of the most powerful features in the Apple universe, Apple universe, if we could call it that. And I'm, I'm actually going to be speaking with an <coughs> iPad expert coming up in a few days. And I know, oh, I kind excellent. Of expect, yeah, I kind of expect he'll be, he'll be talking about some of those kinds of content creation features that really work well for students. So iMovie okay. it is. Um, Jane, recommend a book that maybe it's one that you've been reading lately or one of your all-time faves and tell us why you recommend it. Okay, well, I've been reading this book called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, I haven't read the whole thing. I've sort of been looking at different parts okay. like I do. But um, what stands out to me about this book is that it promotes hope. And I think hope is something that promotes mental health, good mental health, because when you don't have hope, it's pretty depressing. It is. And, it, and this book talks about learning through and working on relationships okay. rather than judging oneself or others as hopeless. Right. And if I could sum up the book, that's what I'd say. So, I will, good read. It is a very good read, and I will add my vote to that as well. I read that last summer, and I honestly think, man, teachers, if you don't have time to read and there's only one book to read, start with that one, Mindset. You're kidding. Yeah. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. By Carol Dweck. It's honestly, it, mm -hmm. it's a game changer, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you sum it up? Well, I, I would say, I mean, you, you described it really well. I mean, she talks a lot about the difference between the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. even as teachers sometimes, and this is terrible to say, but sometimes we get pulled into the, into the fixed mindset, which says that, mm -hmm. you know, certain learners have limitations mm -hmm. that they'll just never be able to shake. And, you mm -hmm. know, Carol Dweck talks a lot about in the growth mindset, how, you know, through effort and intentionality and perseverance, we can, we can learn. One of the one of the great expressions that I took away from the book is the power of yet. And so my grade eight mm -hmm. students are very well trained. So anytime someone in my classes makes a loud comment like, oh, I can't draw almost mm -hmm. immediately. Someone in the class will say <laughs> yet. And that idea yeah. is so powerful, um, you know, and, and as teachers, again, like I said, we you know, we'll step up to the board and say, oh, I, I am a terrible artist or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. Not something we should be saying, right? Exactly. You know, we should be looking at that as, you know, we're on a journey of learning. And if we're weak in an area, we have the potential to improve. And when we make a flat statement and say, oh, I'm terrible at something, mm -hmm. we're really just saying I'm never going to change. And so, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, when I come across that in, you know, even among colleagues, if someone tells me, you know, one I've heard it from colleagues is, oh, I'm just not a tech person. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, the answer is you can become one, you know, there's, there's no one that is locked out of that kind of learning. So yeah, love that book. Don't get me started, Jane. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got you started. <laughs> I'm going to take over the interview. Yes. Great book. Minds Up by Carol Dweck. Jane, tell us about a YouTube channel that you enjoy and tell us why. Well, I've just started to listen to a few TED Talks and um, 
some of them are really funny and some of them are really inspiring and some of them are both and they're not too long you know in terms of minutes so i would say they're worthwhile Mm -hmm. ted and another one too is ted ed which focuses on education ted ed yes yes and those two Jane, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for just your courage to accept this interview from uh, someone that you didn't know. <laughs> and it's it's been everything I hoped it would be. And I'm so thankful to have a, a good voice from primary education. Look forward to hearing from more. Jane, what's the best mm-hmm. way for people to follow you? Well, if they want to follow my thoughts about education, probably Twitter. Mm-hmm. But if they want to see a lot of flowers and trees and oceans then they can go to instagram okay okay fair mm-hmm. warning fair warning and what is your mm-hmm. are you are you able to share your handles on both accounts where do we go on twitter to find you there it's called jane teacher two perfect jane teacher two okay and how about instagram i think it's called j silversides okay. All mm-hmm. right, so we can find you at Jay Silversides or, or just type in Jane Silversides. Again, Jane, mm-hmm. thank you so much. This has been a lot of fun. And have a, we're, we're getting close to the finish line here, so have a, a great rest of the year and a restful summer. You too, Tim. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Teachers on Fire, where teachers come to share, learn, and be inspired. Please subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, and follow us on Twitter at Teachers on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Cavey, saying goodbye for now, and we'll catch you next time right here on the Teachers on Fire podcast.